The Detroit Pistons had a wildly successful 2023 NBA draft. The Pistons walked away with two of the best two-way players at pick 5 and pick 25. With the fifth pick, the Pistons got one of the most athletic players in the draft with Asar Thompson of the Overtime Elite League. Thompson possesses all-star level talent. Then, at pick 25, the Pistons traded up from number 31 to select Marcus Sasser, who was one of the most NBA-ready players in his draft class. The Pistons have now added more young talent to an already impressive roster. The Pistons' young core now includes Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Asar Thompson, Marcus Sasser, Killian Hayes, Isaiah Stewart, James Wiseman, and Isaiah Livers. The Pistons also have the fifth highest cap space in the entire NBA at about $30 million this offseason. What up though YouTube? It's your boy Troy, Detroit Fan TV. In today's video I want to look at the Pistons young core and go over why the Pistons may be closer to being a legit contender than a lot of us think. Be sure to drop me a like on this video. I have a like goal of 200 likes. Also drop me a sub, I'm on the road to 1k subscribers. You guys have been showing me a ton of love and support on my videos lately and I just wanted to say thank you. I have a lot of fun making these videos and interacting with you guys in the comments. So for you guys to show me that love, it really means a lot to me and I appreciate it a ton. So I've already done videos on Marcus Sasser and Asar Thompson and what their additions mean to the Pistons. So I'm not going to bore you guys with doing too much of that stuff. Right now I want to talk about the core of Ivy, K, Duran, and now Asar Thompson. I see that as our core four, our foundational core that we're going to be able to compete with for the long term. You know, guys may come and go, the secondary role players. But I think the guys that will be here for the long term are going to be that core four, that Ivy, K, Duran, and Asar. That combo is really crazy, and the fact that we have those four assembled in the same team, in the same lineup, it's really just a great job by Troy Weaver. He took the long road, he took the hard road to assemble this team and assemble this roster, and it's not always easy being patient, you know, waiting for guys to develop, waiting to get draft picks, but in the end, it does become worth it, because at the end of the tunnel, you end up with a homegrown core similar to like an OKC where Troy Weaver was before where they had Durant, Westbrook, Harden, and Ibaka. All four of those guys were all homegrown draft picks from them. They developed them and they became a powerhouse for a long time. And Durant, Westbrook, Harden, we know all about those guys and what they've been doing in the NBA. Another homegrown core I think about is Steph, Clay, and Draymond out in Golden State. All picks of Golden State, and they came in, developed, and turned into a absolute dynasty. A real dynasty. And I think the Detroit Pistons have the potential to become a dynasty with this core that we have. Cade, Ivy, Durr, and Asar. I see all four of those guys as future all-stars, in my opinion. I look at Ivy, the way he moves and the way he processes things with his athletic ability is second to none. He reminds me a lot of Russell Westbrook, just the pace that he moves and the pace that he plays the game at. Not many in the, today's NBA have those physical abilities and, and those physical gifts that Jaden Ivey has. And not to mention, you know, the second half of the season last year for the Pistons, he really came on and became a very good three-point shooter. It did not take him long to develop that three-point shot. He always had it, but he wasn't as efficient. And then the second half of the season, he became very efficient. And when he's doing that, shooting the three like that, Ivy can be one of the best players in the entire NBA. Because really, that's the only thing that you worry about with Ivy is, you know, can he knock down the three? Because everything else is just lights out. I mean, his finishing, his slashing, mid-range, it's all just top level top level there's not many people out here doing it and he was only he's only had one year in the NBA so I think we have some very exciting things to come from Jaden Ivey now the next player in the core that everyone everyone is completely sleeping on it feels like everyone forgot that Cade Cunningham is on the Pistons and he's our best player everyone forgot about him just because he was injured last year 
he had the shin surgery, and this year he's going to come out. He he's going to be special. Cade, I see him being a 25, 8, and 8 type player. And he could be an MVP in the future just by the way he brings the entire team up. Not only does he make everyone around him better, but he's also very good on defense. He contributes on both ends of the floor. He's just a winning player. If you need a bucket, he'll go get a bucket. Other than that, he's just trying to get the team involved. He's trying to make sure everyone's getting their buckets. But if we really need one, Cade's going to step in and go get it. And last year we seen the evolution of his mid-range game, which I think is his absolute best ability at this point. From mid-range, he's just a knockdown, a knockdown shooter, and it's automatic. I think that's his identity, that's his calling card, his best attribute would be his mid-range shot. Because once he gets to that mid-range, it, it's, it's easy money. It really is. I think Cade, being the leader of this team, he's coming up on a contract extension soon here in the next couple of years. Give him whatever he needs. He's going to lead us to the future. I really, truly do believe in Cade as the star of our team. Cade, Ivy, I think, you know, we really haven't seen them play together like that because Cade went out, what, he played, only played like 20 games or something. So him and Ivy, they haven't really had time to show us what they can do together in the same lineup. Once they do get in that same lineup, it's going to be seriously dangerous just because of Cade's processing and the way he's so slow and methodical and then ivy the way he's just dangerously fast it's like lightning and thunder those two i think are going to complement each other perfectly in the lineup and they're really perfect for the team they make the entire team better around them ivy he's just he does it all with the assists k does it all with the assists they're winning players that is what it comes down to they're not selfish they're not superstars they're not just trying to get a bucket for themselves they're very competitive they have a very high competitive spirit you'll hear Troy Weaver say that but the competitive spirit of those two players is off the charts and I really couldn't be more excited that those two are the face the main facilitators the main ball handlers of the future for the Pistons it means we have a very bright future and you know Cade he's had the shin injury for a long time so Technically, we've never seen him at full 100%. Even his rookie year, where he should have won Rookie of the Year, he wasn't even 100%. He had that chin injury, which was lingering the entire time. So now that he doesn't have that, I really think the sky's the limit for Cade. I said 25, 8, and 8, but I wouldn't be surprised if he can go over that. Another guy that I think that people are sleeping on is Jalen Duran. He's only 19 years old. He brings so much to the defensive side of the ball. And I think his offensive game is really going to blossom, especially with a coach like Monty Williams. What he did with DeAndre Ayton really opened up Ayton's game on the offensive side. Ayton was in Phoenix. He was shooting mid-range shots. His finishing around the rim greatly improved. And I think Duran can take that same route. Last year, they didn't have Duran shooting much from the mid-range, but when he did... He had a good shot. He had good form. It didn't look awkward. And he was knocking down that shot from the mid-range pretty often. So I think if Duran can add that to his game, add even more to his offensive game, he's going to be an all-star for a long, long time. People compare him to Dwight Howard. I think he can be right on the same level as Dwight Howard. And what's crazy about Duran is he he hit a growth spurt this summer. So he's now seven foot tall. It's just crazy. I mean, last year, him being only 18 years old, The way he played defense was ferocious. It seemed like guys were fearing him already, and he's only a teenager, and the opposing team was fearing him in the paint. They didn't want to drive. They were constantly passing it out. Duran was just manhandling. You know, it was like child's play to him. So Duran, he's an absolute beast. I see Duran being an all-star for a really long time. His physical gifts are off the charts. Now that he's seven foot tall, it just makes him even more scary. His rebounding, his defense is second to none. Now the fourth guy that I think is part of the core four is Asar Thompson. Another one, he, he just, he's gifted. His athletic ability is off the charts. He's already one of the most athletic guys in the NBA. He's so athletically gifted. And where that really helps him out is on defense. Blocking shots, coming up with steals, Defending on the perimeter is a you know really strong suit of his game, and that's really what the Pistons need. It's going to take a lot of pressure off of Cade, off of Ivy. They're not going to have to defend 
Zach Levine. They're not going to have to defend Clay Thompson. You know, the best players on the opposing team can now be guarded by Asar Thompson, who is more than suited to do that with his abilities. His defense is great, and his offense is, is right there too. He slashes, he attacks aggressively, his shot's coming along. He's a 30% shooter from three, but that's coming along. I think a good coach like Monty Williams is going to help to improve that. So Asar is a two-way player through and through. He is exactly what the Pistons need. He's like the cherry on top for this rebuild. He's going to come in and contribute from day one. And I couldn't be more excited that the Pistons added a guy like Asar Thompson. Asar really puts our rebuild over the top. I'd say we're right up there with the Thunder and the Rockets as having the brightest young cores in the NBA. So now that I went over the core, I want to talk a little bit about free agency. The Pistons have the fifth most cap space in the NBA. We're projected to have $30 million in cap space to spend, and reports have already come out that the Pistons are going to aggressively pursue Cam Johnson of the Brooklyn Nets. He is a very good two-way player. He shoots the three very well. He defends very well, and he was playing for Monty Williams out in Phoenix, so he has a close bond and close relationship with Monty. I think that will have a very big impact on if he comes to Detroit or not. I'm sure Monty wants him a lot. I'm sure Cam probably would like to come here as well, just to reunite with Monty Williams. But however, the Brooklyn Nets have said they are willing to match any offer that comes in for Cam Johnson. He is a restricted free agent. So the Nets have the opportunity to match any offer. So in order to get Cam Johnson, the Pistons will have to offer something that the Nets will not be willing to match. So it probably would have to be upwards of 25 plus mil. Could even reach up to 30 mil, which I wouldn't have a problem with just because Cam, he's a very good player and he knows his role. He's not trying to be a superstar. He'd complement the whole team perfectly of Cade, Ivy, Duran. He'd fit right in perfectly, and Monty has a good relationship with him. So I think he would be able to help and make an impact from day one. And I think adding a guy like Cam Johnson would absolutely put us in the playoff contention. Now some other names that are mentioned for the wing position are Kyle Kuzma, Draymond Green, Max Strus, Grant Williams, Dylan Brooks, Harrison Barnes. These are all players who would help bring a veteran presence to the Pistons. So this free agency, I'm sure we're going to take a big swing. Troy has already talked about he wants to make an addition. And last year, we weren't really adding players. It was, you know, no, we're not going to add. This isn't the time to do it, Troy Weaver said. But this year, his tune has changed. It seems like he's more in a win-now mode. Just with the draft saying, you know, we're going for a big swing. And already the rumors coming out that we're going to be offering big money offers to Cam Johnson. To me, that shows me that Troy Weaver has shifted his mindset, and he's ready to win now. And another reason why it's pretty important that we're going to start winning now is Monty Williams. The rebuild could accelerate quickly under Monty Williams, who took a young Phoenix Suns team to the finals in his second season as head coach. We know Monty is a winner. We know his track record. His track record proves it. He's a winning coach. That's what he does. He develops players. You can see he came in in Phoenix. It was a young team. And all of a sudden, boom, they're in the finals. His second year as head coach. So Monty is a win-now coach. He's the perfect coach for what we're doing right now with the Pistons and where we're at. We have everything in place, all the players. We have the coach. Just got to develop a little bit more. And I think we're going to be there. We're going to be in contention back in the playoff where the Pistons should be. I couldn't be more excited. It's been a long time coming for all my Pistons fans. I know we've been very patient for a long time. It's been a lot of rough years for us, but I think the wait's going to be finally over. We have a crazy core of young players. We have an awesome coach, great GM, and we have a good owner. I don't think Tom Gores is going to be afraid to spend money. I don't think he'll be afraid to go over the cap limit if we have to. If he needs to go on the luxury tax, I don't see him being afraid to do that because he made Monty Williams the highest paid coach in the NBA. So everything is starting to fall in place for the Pistons. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think the Pistons will have a successful year next year? 
Do you think we can make the playoffs? Do you think we can compete for the play-in? And how long do you guys think it will be until the Pistons are real true contenders? Let me know in the comments. Again, I appreciate all the love you guys have been showing me. It means a lot. I really can't thank you guys enough. So please be sure to drop me a like, drop me a sub. Let me know what you guys think about the Pistons, Young Core, and what they're building. So without further ado, that's going to do it. I'm Troy, this is Detroit Fan TV, and I'm out. Peace.